Hello, it's me, Philip. In this video, I'm looking at an LED light that is refusing to work. It came from a factory unit that had a problem with the, the electrics and it was about... It's not a good sign, there's something floating around in there. The factory unit had a problem with the electrics and there was about half a dozen of these lights all went off. So that's for today's video. Now I'm going to just check for shorts just to make sure these aren't shorted. No shorts from live to neutral to ground and neutral to ground, no. So that seems okay. But I'm going to plug it into my load lamp just in case. So what I've done is I've got a small cable plugged into my load lamp and I'm using some Wagos. Now this is switched off at the moment, so just to test this temporarily, these Wagos will come in handy. So that's all the neutral, the live and earth connected up. I'm just going to turn it upside down before I turn it on, just in case it does come on and gives the camera a surprise. Right, so I'll turn this on at the wall. And I'll turn this on here. And as you can see, nothing. So we'll turn that back off. And get rid of that. We'll see what's wrong with it. I've already loosened these off a little bit. Now, as always, this is not an educational video. So do not copy what you see. Uh, there's probably numerous things I'm doing wrong. If you don't know, this is live... 230 volts, which is enough to give you a nasty shot or even kill you. So there must be a board in here that can that converts the 230 volts to DC to run those LEDs. So I'm assuming something's popped on that board, but I've never opened one of these, so I could be talking a load of rubbish. Right, what do we have? Some kind of weather strip. I've got what could be a burn here. Yes, I do have a... There's something definitely burned in there. There's a class, I think this is a class Y capacitor that's being destroyed. And what is probably, I would think, although well, don't quote us, I've got two fuses that's gone up. I don't think I've ever seen one of these class Y capacitors burn up. 
So we'll clean this. So I'll take that out. Um, there's a lot less in here than I thought. Because I would expect we've seen some kind of electrolytic capacitor after that diode. That must be the bridge rectifier. Zoom in. I'm assuming the fuses have got to be having a clean that up and see what it looks like. FR1 and FR2. VR2. Variable resistor? Can it be? Surely. So I've got no idea what that. Oh, I've got some markings on the back. We'll take this board out. got what appears to be some kind of thermal paste on the back. Presumably that's to spread the heat out the back of the out the back of the unit. So there's nothing on the back. I wonder if I can desolder these two. I don't know if these have been spot welded onto here, but my soldering iron is just not touching. I've set at 400. It's having zero effect on, on here, so they may have been spot welded, I'm not sure. I'll try taking off one of these fuses. Wow. That's very difficult to work on. I don't know what this is. It must be sucking up all the heat from your soldering iron. I'll try a bigger tip. We'll try a DL32, which is brand new. It's up at about 430 and 420. There we go. Wow. That took some doing. So these FR, these have got to be fuses. They must be blown. Yeah. Don't know what I would replace them with. I'll have a look and see if I've got anything. And this capacitor is obviously gone. Let's see if we can get that off and read what it is. Take these fuses out. There might be a resistor after all. Because there's coloured bands on these. Oh, look what I've done. What a mess. Put that down there. Right. So I've got VR2. Verista. Verista. FR2. Which looks like a fuse. And I've got FR2 down here. Which I don't recall seeing in the past. Ah, oh, they're not fuses. I thought the white inside was a fuse, but it's not. It's just blown off the um, the outer coating. I'm assuming they're both the same. It's hard to make out what colours they are. Orange, or is that a kind of is, is it a red? Red, orange, gold, and gold. Gold, gold, orange, and orange. Right, I think that's gold, gold, orange, and orange. It's got to be, hasn't it? So I'll have a look at them. What's this? Right, thankfully that hasn't gone too bad. 14D471K. Let's have a Google of the Vista. 220 volts AC. 
Okay, so this is where I'm at with the board. The live and neutral come in here, and the first faulty component I found is labelled up as FR1 and FR2, which I thought were fusible resistors. Fusible resistors seem to have an extra band, and these have only got four bands. These are them here. Orange, orange, gold and gold. So I went over to Gadget UK164 Discord and with the help of Bruin, he was actually able to find the correct ones online. Bruin says they're wire wound, so that means they're flame proof. And the coating is usually what's used for metal oxide. To my eyes, it's orange, orange, gold, gold, which is 3.3 ohms. And he's left a link. But I also found them on Amazon here for 5 99 and you get 50. They're readily available. The next component that was faulty was the, what I thought was a class Y capacitor, but it's actually a Verista. That's it there. It's a 14D 471K. And that is available on eBay for £1.19. So I could pick that up. Before I go on to order these, I checked the capacitors around the LED driver chip here. And there's no shorts on the capacitors. I also checked the power MOSFETs. And there's no shorts on those. So that's looking good. But when I checked the LEDs with the multimeter, none of them lit up and they're all open. Each one of them. I can't get any readings of them in diode mode and none of them light up. So I went back to Gadget UK164 Discord channel and I asked in there. And Bruin says they're probably 12 volt. It may take a bit more to light them up, but it's not looking good. So if the 12 volt each, there's 54 of them. Eric Bakke came back with three strings, 12 volts times by 18, 216 volts, which is pretty close to 220. So I went back to the board. I put my power supply on 12 volts and I tried to light each one of them up with 12 volts, swapping the polarity as I went and it was absolutely nothing. Each one of them is faulty. With that in mind, I am not going to spend any more money replacing the parts if all of these are actually faulty. If I'm testing these wrong and you know of a better way, please let us know in the comment section. But I think this board is going to go down into the parts bin for spares. I normally ask you to click like if I fix something, but as soon as I haven't fixed it, you can click dislike if you want. So that's it for today's video. It's a no fix. Despite that, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed working on it. So take care and I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.